Hey guys, welcome back to another episode with me in my garden. It is a blazing hot 30 degrees. It's autumn. Um, we're like a month away from the start of winter and it is swelteringly hot here today, which is just crazy. Um, so since it's autumn, I was weeding away in my garden this morning at home um, and it gave uh, watered the plants a little this morning and, and that sort of thing just doing general garden maintenance excuse me under these lockdown conditions so I I thought hey I've got sweet potatoes let's do an episode on sweet potatoes um, because it is a, a plant a vegetable that has for a very long time been overlooked um, even in my youth, I think, uh, people always considered it to be the poor man's vegetable um, and all of this nonsense, like all these stupid things that crazy people come up with. Um, but the sweet potato is actually a really, really rich source of food. It is easy to grow. Um, it has been grown for over 5,000 years in Central and South America. There is evidence, you know, dating back beyond that period. Um of the sweet potato being in cultivation, in human cultivation. It's it's somehow stretched prior to the European movement of, of people. Um, it's, it's actually moved uh, into Polynesia, uh, the Philippines, um, and it is widely eaten by a lot of those people, even in Africa. Um, and how we generally eat it is we bake it in an oven, or you could make sweet potato chips from them. Uh, we often sun dry the 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 actual slivers of of potato of of sweet potato when you slice the the raw potato uh, you can you can deep fry them as as crisps or chips as well uh, and you eat them with peanut sauce or with fish um, it's really delicious and yeah but most commonly you can also eat it as a dessert so you would bake it in an oven um, in foil or on even in a fire in the coals uh, when you're having a barbecue, which we call a braai. Sorry about that. So, um, yeah, let's let's just go through some of the history. So it is from Central South America. It is a distant relative of the potato. People think that it is actually just because it's called sweet potato that it is a potato. It's not technically a potato. It is in the Ipumia genus, so in the Morning Glory genus. So the Morning Glory flower, but if you didn't know, sweet potatoes are actually a form of Morning Glory. Um, you'll see when they flower, which is rare, outside of the tropics, but you'll see that they've got these these beautiful, um, they've got a calyx, which is the little green bit behind the flower, um, that the flower is sort of fused into, and then the flower rises out of that little green bit, um, Kind of like the green thing on when you pick a tomato, that little five five pointed star thing that is attached to the tomato, that is the remnant of a calyx um, of the flower when it was a tomato flower. But in the sweet potatoes case, it's actually uh, it is the the fl the petals are fused like that found on a morning glory plant. Now. Um, I've got some notes here, uh, just to run through some cultivation and propagation tips and, and things. So I've, I planted mine in September, which is the start of our growing season, which is spring uh, in the southern hemisphere. Um, and it's been growing up until now, which is April. So it's been growing right through the summer. Uh, it didn't really get, I mean, it got water with all the other garden plants in our garden. Uh, we've got very sandy soil because we live right at the beach, so it's basically a dune. Uh, and this plant is doing really well. It flowered, it, it's doing fantastic, um, it's trailed everywhere. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Um, so, yes, let's talk about the cultivation in more detail. So, you can basically, how, how you cultivate a sweet potato is you can, when you buy the sweet potato, you put it in a dark space and it will develop eyes. So, it will begin to 
runners will begin to develop off of the, the actual tuber. Um, you can then slice those off and wait until they're long enough and you can slice them off, put them in, into a, a pot or into the ground directly. You could even plant the potato, the sweet potato, as is in the ground, which is what I did. Um, and then it will just begin to grow from that and will grow throughout the growing season. Um, or you could take an existing sweet potato and just cut slips off of that, uh, rooted slips, and you put them into the ground and off they go. Right, so in terms of de diseases and pests and things, they're pretty resistant to a lot of things. Um, aluminium, apparently, is one thing that they don't like. So if you've got a soil that contains high amounts of aluminium, you need to add some lime to that to actually mitigate um, the poisoning of the plant due to high amounts of aluminium in America. Or, yeah, you'd be calling that aluminum, I think. So, yeah. Uh... And how I know that they're ripe is, and I'll show you in a second, is they literally just push up out of the soil. Um, and you'll see that the soil actually begins to crack. And, and they, as the potato, the sweet potatoes begin to grow, the soil actually just lifts. And, and then you'll know that they're ready. And obviously the timing, autumn, uh, is when your potatoes would be ripe. But you can dig them up just to have a look, uh, have a sneak peek and just check. And our one has got this beautiful bright pink um, color on the outside and it's the pale one on the inside um, it's not yellow uh, it's yellow once you cook it um, uh, so yeah um, they are sub subtropical um, but they can be grown in in tropical subtropical and temperate regions um, around the world uh, they require a temperature of roughly 24 degrees um, throughout the growing season uh, to produce a really good healthy plant okay um, and then lastly let's see as a food source so the leaves are also edible so you can take the leaves and you can cook them up like spinach um, I don't particularly like the leaves to be honest you can check I'll put it in a link in the description for um, all of the information this is a really really um, valuable source of food so and it's so simple to grow and you can store it through the winter months especially the fact that it contains so many vitamins uh, and minerals and now in this time that you need to be boosting your immune system um, in fact just all year round really uh, I think it's gained a lot of acclaim now with the whole drive toward organic foods and you know veganism and and people just looking for better alternatives um, to what's on the market, this is a vegetable that I think, or a plant that I think, uh, is just, it's, its uses are endless. I mean, you could powder it, you know, and, and use it as a, as a substitute um, for making different kinds of foods, as, as you would flour. Um, it's got micronutrients, it's got beta-carotene, it's got um, complex carbohydrates, um, yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's just, without any further rambling in this hot sun, let's take a look at the plant and we'll dig them up and, and show you what they look like when they come out of the ground. Okay, cool. Let's go. We've got two plants um, in our garden. The one is in, in full sun and the other one's in shade. So this is the full sun plant. Um, and you can see it's got these almost heart-shaped leaves, very stunning. Uh, and it runs all the way along there. That's the core of the plant. So if, see the thing is like on camera you can't really pick this up, but you can see the ground is actually swelled. It's risen up here. It's like, but, but like a molehill. And we do have major moles. I mean, our moles are nearly as big as cats. I kid you not, that's not an exaggeration. Um, they're called dune mole rats and I need to get this out of the ground before the mole rats find out that they're here because they will devour them um, and here you can see that the plant is actually trailed all over it's literally gone behind there's some pepper dews and things growing back there uh, because we just moved in here so that a lot of these plants are we're trying to establish the garden um, and you can see that we've put a top dressing of bark wood chips on the surface of the dune sand and it's actually facilitating the development of of the garden um, so yeah 
so so this is pretty much it so really what i'm going to do is you can see that it, it kind of roots in some places as it goes it's got these little roots right in there there's a little root there so i could cut that off essentially and i could start a new plant from that um, but the best time to do that is obviously uh, during the growing season um, and and here's the main vine you can see that that is definitely the main one right there it's, it's the thickest so basically what i've i've got here is i've got my garden fork um, and i'm just gonna stick it in let me just try and get it in there okay and then i'm just gonna pop it up I do this with one end. Ah, there we go. And here is a nice big sweet potato. So I'm going to break this off like that. There's another one over there. Now this is still quite small. Um, but So I'm going to leave that one in the ground. That's the biggest one so far. And then all along, wherever it makes roots, is where you would actually find new sweet potatoes coming up. So, this is a killer of a sweet potato right there. Um, so, it's... This is massive. It's beautiful. So, we're going to enjoy this. Um, I think this will be like... it. it what, like... I'm going to eat this over the next three days, probably. Um, so that is the um, Ipumia patata, sweet potato. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a quick one, and it, it uh, was really just uh, developed because I found that mine is ripe, and it needs to be taken out. So there we go. Hope you enjoy it. And stay safe wherever you are in the world uh, under these lockdown conditions. Stay healthy. Bye. Bye for now.